Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic. I'm joined with a special guest, Tom Sturdy from Sturdy Cycles. He's been kicking around in the building for the whole week since the tech show. I couldn't find my way out. Yeah, all right. Well, nice to join us again, Tom. So we're going to go through the questions that people have been sending in using the hashtag AskGCNTech. First question in, fantastic username. I'm struggling with it already. Dida, Dida Wifels 68 Three one. That's what I'm going to go with. They say, how do pro teams bed in new disc brake pads if you need to install 20 plus bikes? Can't imagine they take them out for a 20 minute bedding in ride. Do they have another procedure? I'm going to throw it straight out there that I think a pro mechanic is just going to fit brake pads into someone's bike and go, hey, you've got new brake pads in your bike. Go a little bit steady for the first ride. Yeah, I imagine so. I have seen some products that um, allow mechanics to sort of spin the wheel and then pull the brakes, but there's probably not much space in a in a truck for that. So no, um, I think yeah, it's pretty similar to what you would do with installing new tires on your bike. You're just going to be mindful of it, go a bit steady for the first like little bit of riding, and then it's job done. Don't think you need like a thorough bedding in process. No, okay. Um, next question, Mark Smith. Do you want to read this one out? He says, hi, Dr. Bridgewood et al. It's, I've been dabbling with waxing and I'm seriously impressed. I'm going to invest in a slow cooker slash crock pot to make the job easier and wonder what size, volume in brackets, I should go for and any other advice you can give before I buy. You have also been dabbling in a bit of chain waxing you were telling me the other day. Yeah, yeah, I'm impressed as well. Yeah, yeah. you're impressed? Yeah. Um, in terms of the size of crock pot slow cooker, um, well, it feels like it just makes sense to me to choose something relatively small, otherwise you're going to have to just heat up loads more wax than you really actually need. Yeah, so probably the smallest size you can fit a coiled up chain in. Yeah, which I'm going to say is like a cereal bowl size. Yeah, it seems about right. Is that a universal measurement? Cereal bowl size. <laughs> yeah, pop, pop. all right. Um, Marcel Hofter 9031 says, Hi GCN Tech Team, what is the science behind tubeless tyres having less rolling resistance? and tyres with tubes. Thanks, love the show. Um, I mean, the simple answer is just friction, isn't it, Tom? Um, yeah. If you haven't got an inner tube um, up against the inner surface of the tyre, there's less friction between it, and then a tubeless tyre sidewall tends to be thinner than a normal tyre and an inner tube. Therefore, the, as it deforms, as it contacts the road, it reduces the, the wasted um, energy, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, all right, I'm glad you agree. Um, next question, what you got? Uh, in the pursuit of perfect tyre pressure, when pumping up tyres, should I over-pump tyres just a little to account for the air loss when removing the head of the valve? Or is the air actually just from the hose? <laughs> I feel like they might have answered their own question. I think so, yeah, <laughs> most of the time. Well, I suppose it would depend on the type of head you got on your pump. Some of yeah. them apply pressure, but as soon as you pull that head off, the, um, the end of the valve, the valve is, is closed. So if there's any loss from the if there's any loss from the tire, it's going to be very, very minimal. Um, I got one thing to elaborate on that because I am a bit of a bike nerd. Uh, I think it's worth pointing out that all track pump gauges do tend to be ever so slightly different. Yeah. Some are more reliable than others. So what I tend to do at home is pump it out of the track pump to get roughly the right pressure. And then I've got a digital toe peak tire pressure gauge that I then use to get it right. Of course you have. Yeah. But if you want to get it exactly right, that's the best way to do it. But I wouldn't start trying to overestimate for a canvas and pressure loss. You're never going to be able to guess that. Um, next question in is from SW5351. They say, hi tech team. I was wondering if my bike is not aero with a round water bottle on. Would it be more aero if I put it in my jersey pocket? Because I think it would act like a fairing behind my back. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I think it's going to depend on the position on the bike, isn't it? Um, yeah. There's been there's been quite a lot of um, tests and studies done that that behind the body is is a good position for a water bottle. Yeah. But I think it is going to depend on the position, um, and also you're going to want to drink from it as well. So yeah. you're going to be a lot slower if you get. <laughs> it's thirsty, not very so. convenient, is it? That is a good point, actually, saying it's position dependent because I think that's the case with. 99% of things to do with aerodynamics. It's all very much individual to bike, setup, rider, your position on it. So there's lots of things to take into account. On principle, I think it might be slightly faster. Yeah, I think in that, yeah. in that pure aerodynamic sense, it's probably going to be slightly yeah. faster. Um, Jason Len, the 8902. Um, do you want to read this one out? Yeah. Uh, so I find myself riding on the small ring 90% of the time, even on flat roads. 
What does this mean? Is it bad for my drivetrain and would I be better off with a different gearing or a one by setup? According to my bike specs, I have a Shimano Tiagra 5034 compact chainring and an 11 to 32 10 speed cassette with 175 millimeter cranks. Um, if you're riding in a small chainring 90% of the time, even when you're on the flat, it sounds like you just don't have the correct gear ratio suitable for the speeds that you're riding at, your ability, and the terrain that you're riding on. Um, yeah, would a one by be more beneficial? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say if you're spending the vast majority of your time in one of the chain rings, then there's probably an argument for, for losing the other one. It's certainly, I run a one by setup on my bike, and that's purely why I did it. Yeah. Um, probably get a slightly better chain line as well by going with a one by because you're not going to be cross-chaining as much when it's down in the smaller sprockets. So if we're going to suggest maybe going one by, go maybe one or two teeth larger than 34, and if you need to have that additional gear in, if the rear derailleur can accommodate perhaps a wider range cassette. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Um, last question for this week is from um, Stopperer. They say, hi Manon and gals. I don't know where Manon went. Yeah, what's that all about? Um, how about inflating tires with hydrogen instead of air to save on weight? Every milligram counts. This would be the perfect question for if Ollie was here. He would nerd out. He'd on probably this. know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say it isn't worth doing because hydrogen is going to leak out of the tyre super, super fast. And if you do a long ride, your tyre is going to be flat by the end. Yeah, then you've got to have hydrogen around. And I'm always pumping up my tyres at the last minute before I leave for a ride. So, yeah. I don't think it makes sense. I get the idea behind it. Use normal air, and especially if you're using tubeless tyres, um, the sealants aren't going to be compatible with that, I'd have guessed. Yeah, I'd, I'd have thought that would leak quite quickly. Yeah. All right, um, that wraps up this week's GCN Tech Link. As always, sorry if we didn't answer your question, but keep commenting it in the comments section down below. But I can't promise we're going to have um, 3D print entertainment expert Tom here every single week. He's got a lot of bikes to build. Right, we're out of here. Tom, thanks for joining us. All right. Should we get some lunch? Yeah. See you later.